Today's episode is going to discuss the success cycle. Because success comes in cycles. But in order for you to maximize your success, in order for you to have continued success, you have to understand the cycle of life. You have to understand the cycle of success. So let's talk all about that. What does it mean when I'm saying the success cycle, right? Uh, because everybody wants to be successful. Everybody has big dreams, big goals, big aspirations. Uh, but how to get there is a different story. A lot of people are not clear on what steps they need to take in order to achieve true success. So the first thing that I want to talk about today is taking your success and striving for success in small steps, right? Now, I know for a lot of you, you feel like, okay, Urban Money Manager, uh, I want to be great. I want to be the world's biggest celebrity. How can I get there by doing small steps? See, where most people go wrong is um, they start off very far from where they want to be. And because of the fact there's such a distance, a lot of times when you just swing for the fences, every single time you're up to bat, you always miss or you always fall short of the mark. It's a lot better to just get a base hit. It's a lot better to just say, you know what? I'm going to start off small and then gradually work my way up to the top. Right. So that's the reason why you have that old adage. You've got to crawl before you can walk. You want to take things in small steps because everything that you do when it comes to your success is based upon a learning curve. Right. You're not going to come right out of your mother's womb and understand how to be the world's greatest chef or the world's greatest violinist or a top performing athlete. It's going to take years and years and years and years of training to be able to build your way up to that point. So that's another thing that I want to make mention of is one of the reasons why you have to take small steps on the road to success is because um, according to research, based upon the studies of uh, research by the name of Anders Ericsson, it takes you about 10,000 hours to reach world class. Right. World class success. So it's in other words, large success is not something that happens overnight. Right. That's the reason why you may or may not have heard this before, but there's a saying that goes all overnight successes generally take about 15 years. You know, whenever the media is talking about somebody that just succeeded overnight, it's never overnight. You might be seeing this person yesterday, but the person that you're looking at on the camera has usually been working at least 10 to 15 years before they were able to reach a level of superstardom, right? So how did they get to that level? By taking small steps, by putting in 10,000 hours and building upon their skills and their talents every single day. You see what I'm saying? That's one of the things that gets you to success. Everybody has a certain degree of talent, right? You may feel as though because you're talented, that's going to be sufficient for you to reach your success. The only people that reach the level of success, big success that they really aspire to have, is those that take their talent and convert it into Skills. Skills is what pays the bills. Skills is what gets you recognized. You have some you have a lot of talented people in the world. You have a lot of talented singers that have never been recognized. You have a lot of talented basketball players that have never made it to the NBA. You have a lot of talented workers who have never become best in class at whatever it is that they do in their industry. Why is that? Because a lot of people are not using the 10,000 hours to take their talent to work their way to world class success where the output would be skills, right? What's the process? Small steps. So the first thing that I need you to understand is if there's a goal that you want to have achieved within five years time, let's say 10 years time. 
it's always important for you to think about what you can do right now in order to get there, right? Even if you have a goal for a year's time from now. Let's say that you're someone that wants to lose weight. Let's say that you have a goal that by the end of the year, you want to lose 10 pounds of fat, right? If you're trying to lose 10 pounds by the end of the year, you don't say, oh, okay, well, I want to lose 10 pounds by the end of the year. I figure I'll get started tomorrow. That's too late. That shows that you're not applying the small steps. If you're applying the small steps, what, what are you going to do? You're going to say, how do I get started on my goal today? You see what I'm saying? That's the reason why the small steps is so important. Because small steps creates action, right? A lot of times when you have these big views, right, and you're trying to move mountains in what you're trying to accomplish, it's hard to take that vision and put it into actionable steps, right? It looks good in your mind. It feels good in your dreams. But how do you take those dreams and break it down into very small chunks of things that you can actually do starting today, right? That's why I was saying if you're somebody that's trying to lose weight, don't just talk so much about how much weight you want to lose. If you know in your mind that you want to lose 10 pounds in weight, the first actionable step that you need to have is, okay, maybe I'm not going to drink any sodas today. Maybe I'm going to cut my sugar intake and not a registered licensed dietitian. So take my information with a grain of salt. I just happen to be someone that believes in working out, but I'm just giving you some ideas on how you can take proactive action to reach your big goals today. You see what I'm saying? That's what you have to do. Let me show you this another way, right? For every big goal, You have to have the ability to take a big goal in the success cycle and turn it into small steps. Small steps means what can I do today, right? So let's say maybe you have a goal of making a million dollars. Okay, are you going to make a million dollars today? No. It might be possible for you to do it in 10 years from now. It might be possible for you to be able to do it in 20 years from now. But are you ever going to reach that million dollar figure if you wait until 10 years from now to get started? No. You have to see your goal 10, 15, 20 years down the line and get started today. So you have to always ask yourself, in the world of small steps that leads to success, what can I do today? Because large success, anybody will tell you this, anybody who's uh, achieved something on a high level will tell you that the secret to success is small steps. It's the achievement of small things done day in and day out, every single day, where the compound effect of those small steps leads to drastic and massive results, right? So you gotta ask yourself, what can I do today to reach my one-year goal, five-year goal, 10-year goal? And then you just start writing it out. You know, what's number one? What's the first thing that I can do? What's the second thing that I can do? What's the third thing that I can do? Because the people that are most successful in the success cycle, they realize that you must value and focus on process over outcome, right? Think good about what I'm saying right now. Process over outcome. Everybody just thinks about the end game. Everybody thinks about the shiny car. Everybody thinks about the big house. But how often is it that these same people that think about their huge dreams and what the end goal and the finish line looks like, how many times do they actually step back and say, you know what? The way that I get to the big house is maybe having a budget, 
Maybe it's me taking a class in my trade. Maybe it's me finding someone who has achieved what I want to achieve and just giving them a phone call. See, those thoughts are not those same type of sexy thoughts as you riding around in a Benz. <laughs> it's not the same thought as you, you know what I mean, flying around in a private jet. Everybody wants to have those dreams, but they don't know how to take these dreams into the reality of what is the first, second, and third thing that I can do today to make my dream become a reality? So that's what I want you to focus on. What can I do today? This is how you get in the success cycle. Now, again, one of the reasons why this methodology, this framework that I'm showing you, this cycle that I'm showing you is so important is because not only is small steps good because it gives you something to work your way up to today rather than just dream about it. What happens when you do a series of small steps day in and day out? Focusing on process over outcome. Focusing on the process of achieving one small step that leads to big results. What's one of the benefits of doing that? Well, one of the benefits of doing that is that small success Small success builds momentum. And that's what you're going to need in order to be able to be a success. You're going to need momentum. If you want to be able to have, if you want to be more than a one-hit wonder at something, if you want to be able to achieve on a high level, you're going to need momentum that comes from small successes done day in and day out. Like I said, not every single time, not every single punch has to be a knockout. Not every single punch has to be a haymaker. What you have to understand is by you doing the small things, right? By you getting the small wins, by you, you know what I mean? By you actually starting your day and saying, okay, I can get this done today. Okay, I can achieve this today. Okay, I can break this down today. You're going to get better and better and better with that over time because your brain subconsciously now is more encouraged and building up your own confidence on the ability to get things done. You see what I'm saying? When you, when you are just looking at things just from a big picture point of view, you are powerless. Because you said, okay, I want to make a million dollars, but I don't know how. You're powerless there. You say, okay, I want to be able to have the big house, but I don't know step one. I want to start a major business, but I don't know step one. So whenever you're in that situation, whenever you're in that scenario, you're powerless. So how do you gain power in building momentum? Doing the things that you can do in small steps because small success builds momentum. Right. So as you're thinking about this, think about it in terms of a snowball. Right. Maybe you start off on day one building a very small snowball. But then guess what happens? That snowball, it becomes bigger over time and bigger over time. And it becomes more and more and more powerful. But it started with the snowball that was right in here. You see what I'm saying? It's just like, again, Let's go back to the example of working out, physical fitness. Maybe if you're trying to lose 10 pounds, you know, maybe you might not be in shape to be able to run three miles a day. You're going to start off with the small snowball of, okay, maybe let me walk around the block. Maybe let me walk around the park for 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. And then eventually the walk becomes a jog. A jog becomes a run. A run becomes a sprint. And then before you know it, you might go from starting to, you know, lose a little bit of weight every single week to now, okay, now you're talking about losing one pound a week. Now you're going and losing two pounds a week. And before you know it, there you are with 10 pounds gone within a year. See what I'm saying? Everybody's physical makeup is different. But what I can guarantee is that by you following this process of the small success, 
That's how you get to the longer end picture. Because how many times have you actually tried to work out, right? How many times have you tried to go into a physical body transformation plan? And you say, yeah, I'm going to be ripped. I'm going to be diesel. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. And then your very first workout, you try to go all out. And then you're like, I'm not going back to the gym again. This thing killed me. I'm never going to get there. See, by you not applying this law of small success builds momentum, you never gave yourself the opportunity to channel your own momentum because you were trying to start big on day one. It doesn't happen by starting big on day one. You have to create momentum. And that's the reason why we said before, the momentum really comes not only by the small steps, but again, the momentum comes by the 10,000 hours because Throughout the process of going 10,000 hours of building your skills, by the time you see somebody that's actually successful in what they're doing, you're looking at them in their peak. You're looking at them from the time, not just this little tiny snowball, you're looking at them and they're on avalanche mode. You're not seeing somebody just with a little bit of muscle. You're seeing somebody that's almost like a professional bodybuilder. You're seeing somebody that's at the climax of their success. You're looking at somebody in their pinnacle when you're seeing them on TV. But what will TV do? TV will give you a bias and think that all this happens overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. Small success builds momentum. So now you have to figure out, okay, what is it that I can do from one week to the next to build up my momentum, right? Because even when you think about it, and this might be something for uh, the brainiacs or the geeks that watch my channel, you have to examine the neuroscience behind momentum, right? So whenever you do anything, your brain creates neural pathways. Whenever you have these neural pathways, it's basically a highway that's in your brain where your brain is making sense of the activities that you're engaged in, right? So I give you a prime example. Um, whenever you were first learning a language or whenever you first started walking, right? Were you the world's best walker? No. When you first started off with the language, did you first get down the language and immediately it was at a conversational level? No. You were slurring in words. You were trying to find the right pronunciation of words, the right spelling of words. When is the proper time to say that word? You know, it doesn't, again, happen overnight. But as you keep practicing, as you keep putting in your 10,000 hours, right? And another a good book to read on the 10,000 hours is um, a book that was written by Malcolm Gladwell called Outliers, right? 10, 000, by you going through the process of putting in that 10,000 hours or what is known as the 10,000 hour rule, by you going through the 10,000 hours, the daily practice of things, what is your brain doing? You're making new neural pathways on the road to mastery. As you're making these new neural pathways in your mind, as you go to sleep at night, your brain is remembering all the things that you did today. And when you wake up, your brain remembers now, oh, okay, we did this from the day before. Okay, let's build on what we did from yesterday. You see what I'm saying? When you're starting a new day, your brain has already taken the memory that was dumped in the mind from the previous day and it's building upon that. That's why I said the brain doesn't start from nothing to the peak. It has to grow. It has to develop like a muscle. That's how muscles develop. You don't just do one workout in the gym and automatically you're a beast. <laughs> it don't work like that. It has to be continuous workouts before you go from scrawny to beast mode or for you go before you go from obese to overweight to diesel shredded ripped lean before you go to beast mode it takes time 
You have to develop the muscle memory. Your brain has to develop the neural pathways. And also, when you, de when you develop these neural pathways, after going 10,000 hours in something, your brain forms a chemical in the mind which is known as myelin, right? So myelin has basically been researched to, to uh, basically show that whenever you become highly skilled in doing anything, your brain develops a special coding around that area of memory. So say, for example, you're really good. You're a really good chef, let's say. Right. Whenever your mind is making memory of the recipe that you used on how to cook, whatever it is that you're cooking or getting the ingredients, how long it takes to put it together, your brain is developing myelin in that area, right? And the more myelin that you're developing through the process of small steps that's building momentum over the course of 10,000 hours, the closer you are to becoming the world's best chef. See what I'm saying? Your brain, just like the rest of your body, is a muscle. So that's the reason why I need you to understand now that you have to start in small steps. See, what a lot of you have done, and I'm hoping that this is encouraging to some of you, because what a lot of you have done is you have already resigned yourself to say, oh, because, you know, I was a C student or I was a D student in middle school when all I was learning about was the French Revolution. That means that I'm not smart enough now to have my own business, or I'm not smart enough now, you know what I mean, to know how to manage my money, or I'm not smart enough, or I'm not strong enough, or I don't have enough energy to be able to look how I want to look, to be in great shape. You are smart enough. It's just that now you have to understand the training process that goes into how to work your way up to success, because it comes in small steps, right? By you having that myelin release over the 10,000 hours, now you realize, okay, it's not because of the fact that I'm not smart enough. It's just the fact that I need to know where to get started. Getting started is everything. That's why I said it's like a cycle, right? So when you look at things in a cycle, right? Let's just take it here. We can use a cycle, but we can also use four quadrants, right? You can say starter or beginner, right? This is where you are right now, right? If you're at starter or beginner, uh, then you get to a point of good, right? When you're starting off from starter to beginner, your objective is to go from starter to good, right? But then, from good, you can get to great. Then from great, you can get to world class, right? You have to be able to understand the process. You can't jump. You have to know the rules to the game, right? This is a fundamental rule in the game of life. Nobody pops out a starter and then jump immediately to world class. It doesn't happen. I don't care who you're talking about. There has to have been some natural process that got you from starter to good to great to world class. Show me a person that has broken this rule. You will not find it. When you start off at starter and beginner mode, right, everything is about learning. You have to first get here and learn what you need to do to get to good, right? You have to get from beginner to good, and then through from good to great, it's all about practice. It's all about continued learning. You have to be moving with so much momentum. It's like being, being a locomotive, right? The same locomotive that might not have any power to move at one point, to even move one inch, will be the same steam engine locomotive that can break down walls, that can go through a, a brick fortress. But you have that, that locomotive has to have enough momentum 
It has to have enough energy to be able to break through that fortress. So the same thing with you. Do you have enough momentum to break through the fortress of good? Do you have enough momentum to break through the fortress of great? And lastly, do you have enough power? Do you have enough energy? Do you have enough stamina and momentum to get to world class? You see, that's the, that's the cycle of success. But the way that you continue to cycle this around is small steps. Because these quadrants that you're looking at, this takes a lifetime in and of itself. Like I said, again, 10,000 hours. You want to get, you want to get through these quadrants is going to take you at a minimum 10,000 hours. Okay. So that's the cycle of success. And now that you have knowledge about the cycle of success, right? Now that you have knowledge about that, let me give you a couple quick tips on how to be able to build up that momentum, right? So we talked about small steps, right? Another thing that you can do that I would recommend is uh, mentors. Because the mentors are going to show you exactly how they reach the success, right? So you might be at a level where you're at small steps, but then you have to look at somebody else and how they're doing it. You also need to have priority, right? Because it doesn't, these things don't just happen by magic. You have to actually look at every single day and say, what will give me the most success out of this day? Like, like I said, when it comes to the priorities, again, for an example, on losing weight, you have to look at the priorities and say, okay, there's a million different things that I could do every single day to try to lose weight, but what would be one of the best things that I can do that's practical for me at this stage of the game that would make the biggest difference, right? You have to have uh, a system of priority of things in place. So there's a lot of different factors that can lead into accelerating your success cycle. But again, the whole point is to build up a momentum behind the success. And the reason why you need momentum and the reason why your momentum is so important is because your success is all about you defying the laws of gravity. So what do I mean when I talk about you defying the laws of gravity, right? When you look at success and when you look at your rise to success, just to make it very basic for you, it's going to need to look like this. Right? You're going to be literally starting from the bottom, and then you're going to need to work your way up to the top. Right? Now, of course, this is kind of um, an exaggerated example because you're obviously going to go through highs and lows, up, down. Success is not a straight line, right? It's going to be highs and lows, zigzags. You're going to go up, you're going to try, you're going to fail, you're going to go up, you're going to try, you're going to fail. You know what I mean? The, your success is going to be a lot more like this to get to the top, just keeping it real. So I don't want to fool you. I don't want somebody to be like, oh, it's not that easy, Urban Money Manager. You just don't rise to the top. Okay, now I've explained that. Now you know. But at the same time that you're trying to make your ascension to the top, right, in reaching your success, what is life doing at the exact same time? Life is moving in a downward cycle, right? And this is the reason why I said you are trying to defy the laws of gravity, right? Because how does gravity work? Gravity keeps us shifted and centered at the bottom, right? It's like when you think about trying to soar somewhere or when you think about trying to fly high, you're going against the laws of gravity. So I'll give you a prime example. Again, let's say that you want to, um, I don't know, let's say that you want to be able to get in shape so that way you can look younger, let's just say. Every single day, you're getting older, right? Every single day, you're getting one step closer to living another year, if, if you're alive. 
You're not getting any younger. Today is the youngest that, you're, that you'll ever be. But you're constantly working now to try to, to look younger and maybe even feel younger than you felt yesterday. So even though you're older today, you're on an upward path trying to defy the laws of gravity to look and feel young while gravity is working against you. And that's so much a model on how it is when it comes to your success in life, right? As you're trying to climb up, there's going to be so many things, honestly, that try to pull you down, right? Some of the things that will try to pull you down is time, because time often works against us. Time is limited, right? Uh, people can work against us if you have the wrong people in your circle. Um, it might even be your circumstances, right? If you're someone that is born in poverty and you're trying to make your ascension to the top, right? You're going to have to really go against the laws of gravity because there might be so many other people with resources and opportunities that you don't have, right? So you have to be very honest with yourself and understand, you know what? In my life, what things are working against me? And I think that this should be a good exercise for everybody. Understand what are your laws of gravity? You know, if you imagine if you were an astronaut or imagine if you were a rocket scientist, you're trying to build a rocket that can soar your life all the way to the moon. You're trying, the sky's the limit, right? You have to imagine your life like a rocket scientist. You're trying to boost your way all the way to the top. You're trying to get all the way to the top. And the first thing that you have to do in building the rocket is understand, okay, how do I build a machine so powerful that it can defy the laws of gravity? How can I build a success machine that's so powerful that I can get this done within a year's time? How can I build a success machine that's so powerful that it will not allow negative people or bad influences to pull me down? How can I build a, a success machine that's so powerful, that's so rocket fuel, that everybody sees flying high in the air, that everybody sees soaring to the sky? How do you build this machine when the circumstances of life are causing you to bring yourself all the way down to the bottom as you're subject to the laws of gravity? Right? Because just like gravity, these things are intended to bring you to the bottom. If I was just saying everything is just so optimistic, so rosy, I'd be lying to you. And it goes against the laws of gravity. Okay? You can't, it, it's just like how they say your arms are too short to box with God. This is how the game works, right? But you have to make yourself strong enough to be able to go against these forces. And you can do it. I know that you can do it, but you just need the proper planning and you need the proper understanding on how to master your success, right? So I hope these things have helped you. Your job as someone that values your success is working every single day to swim upstream, right? That's the reason, again, why I'm telling you that the most successful people They've managed to become successful because of the things they're doing every single day. Because they understand gravity is working 24-7, right? If the river is flowing downstream, the water is coming against you. The current is coming against you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So what does that mean for you? That means that you're going to have to devise a system where you're going to have to be sw swimming upstream against the current 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sometimes does, does the force of the water come down harder on you? Of course. We all have those trials. We all have those tribulations. Sometimes it doesn't feel so bad. But this is the reason why a lot of times as you're trying to get your life from one level to the next, a lot of times it feels painful. 
a lot of times it feels hard. It feels like a stretch. And now you know why. Because you're up against a life that has the laws of gravity working against you. And you're trying to fly high while the laws of gravity are trying to bring you down to the bottom. You're trying to swim upstream. Meanwhile, the current is running against you. And so if you want to be able to reduce the strength of the current, you have to write down every single thing that's making that water flow down so bad. It might be a bad job that's making that water come down 10 times as hard on you. It might be negative people that's making this thing come down 10 times hard on you. And to be honest, there's going to be certain things that's controlled in this downstream river that's going to be outside of your control. You're just going to have to work against it. You cannot reverse time. You know, you cannot reverse certain things that happens in life that's out of your control. The man that is successful is the one that understands the environment that he's in and he's able to mold himself to thrive in that environment, right? It's just like you could be the most powerful creature on land, but if you found yourself in the water, you could be powerless to the point of death. If you are a land animal, you might be a beast on land, but you might not be in a position to run with the sharks. So you have to, it's all about understanding your environment and then adapting and adjusting to your environment to be able to thrive in that environment. Okay? So to recap, the success cycle, the success cycle is all about small steps every single day that builds momentum, that leads to the 10,000 hours of success, okay? How do you build the momentum? By understanding where you are in the cycle of things. You have to understand where you are in this quadrant and not trying to break the laws. So you have to work, you have to work with the laws to get to where you want to be at. If you are starting off, get to good. Don't worry about becoming a billionaire. If you haven't made $1,000, now is not the time to think about making a million dollars, right? If you have not made six figures, right, and you're coming from five, the next step in the natural progression is to get from five to six, Right. But what, what do so many people do? So many people might start off at zero, one figure. They fantasize and dream about seven, eight, nine, ten figures. And because of the fact they don't know that it sticks, it sticks them right where they're at. They're stuck. There's no forward progress. So now, you know, small steps is the key. So just in the exact same way that there is a cycle of success, you can also have what's known as a failure cycle. And I find this to be one of the most unfortunate things that I've seen happen you know, to a lot of great people. The same way that you will build momentum behind success if you're making the right moves and you know, um, the powers that be is working on your side, same thing happens with failure cycle, right? You can build up momentum doing the wrong things. So give you an example of the failure cycle. You make one bad move, which leads to the next bad move. And then just like a cycle, you find yourself constantly whirlwinding in this negative spree that you're in, this negative spiral that you're in, right? So just to make it basic for you, um, let's say, for example, when it comes to you managing your money, right? Um, if you're not budgeting your money, that might be considered one bad move. And because of the fact that you're not budgeting your money, you're, you're missing out on how much money you could have saved, how much money you could have invested, how much money you could have set aside for something that would have been more meaningful to you in your own life, right? So just on the strength of that one bad move, maybe that's 
taking money and putting it into things that would make other bad moves. Let's say that you take all of your money and you spend it all buying donuts. You just take all of your money and you spend it all on the strip club. Whatever the case may be, whatever your advice is, right? Just by you making this one bad move financially, now you've damaged your health. Now you've damaged your relationships. And that's how the spiral begins. You see, again, it's not the big things that really takes you out. It's not like, oh yeah, one big catastrophic blow. It's one tiny misstep that leads to another misstep and it keeps recycling itself over and over and over again. So that's why you have to have the consciousness and the awareness to say, you know what? Maybe when I'm identifying myself making this bad move, even though it may feel like a one-time action, you need to ask yourself, you know what? Who am I becoming in the process of making this one bad move, right? What, where is this one bad step leading me to? Because that one step is leading you to another step, which is leading you to another step, and then beyond, right? That's how the failure cycle works. And the thing that's so damaging and so dangerous about the failure cycle is uh, when you get yourself into the failure cycle, it's very hard for you to get yourself out. You see, like, again, when you are at the bottom, right? Like when a, when a, when a, when a plane takes off and it can fly so high in the air, a plane uses its majority of, the fu of its fuel just getting out of the runway, right? Because while you're on the runway, it's so hard for you to actually get that plane off the ground and for you to actually elevate yourself as high as you need to get. That takes a lot of fuel, you know? Once you're actually up there, Okay, it doesn't take as much fuel as when you're starting off at the bottom. So one of the worst places that you can find yourself is at the bottom because this is where it requires the most fuel. So when you find yourself in the midst of this failure cycle, you want to get out of the failure cycle as quickly as possible because the longer you find yourself in there, the more taxing it will be on your own fuel and your own energy to get yourself off the ground to be able to take off and fly high, right? So I hope that that makes sense when it comes to the failure cycle. The same exact way that you have a success cycle is the exact same way that you can have a failure cycle. The same way that you can have momentum in doing the right things and everything that you touch turns to gold, it seems like, to the outside world. The same thing happens to people that are in the failure cycle. Now, you can't be in both at once. You can't have, you know, all of these things working against you, but then still be working to success. Most likely, you're either largely in one area or another. Either you're really in the success cycle or you're really in the failure cycle. And there's no in-between, right? Because, again... You're flowing <laughs> up or down. Either you're swimming upstream or life is taking you down to the bottom, right? It's either the rivers are coming, crashing down on you and coming down to the bottom or you are moving upwards. There is no in-between in life. Either you're making one step closer or you're taking one step back. Even if you don't see it, it's happening, right? So... Now that we've discussed the failure cycle, one of the things that I want you to do as you're thinking about the ways for you to succeed and be able to transform yourself into the success cycle is one of the things that I would call inverted thinking, right? So as you're doing inverted thinking, this tends to be a bit easier for most people because, you know, um, a lot of times if you're trying to brainstorm about, you know, what are the best things that I can do to be successful? What are the things that I should do right now to get going today? You know, how do I take the information that I got in this video and start putting things into action? You know, a lot of times 
because of the fact that we might not have the right knowledge on how to do better or because of the fact that it seems daunting, that's not always the best way for us to start off our thought process. A lot of times, the best way that we can get going is instead of asking, you know what, how do I get to a point of success? Ask yourself the opposite. You know, how do I not get to the point of success? So, again, going back to what we've been sticking with with the weight example, you know, if you are trying to lose 10 pounds in a year and you're asking yourself, how do I get that done? Another question, which might be a better question to ask is, how do I sabotage myself and make sure I don't hit that goal? Right. So that that'll give you a lot of easy answers. You know, here's one. Eat whatever. Eat whatever you want. Right. Because you know that by eating whatever you want up to this point, that's already gotten you to the weight that you're at right now. Right. So by us understanding that eating whatever is one of the factors from inverted thinking. Now we understand that in order for us to to lose weight. That means that we're going to have to follow some type of conscious diet. You see what I'm saying? You're taking the results that you get from the inverted thinking and then just saying, okay, I'm I'm smart enough to know how not to get to the point of success. Let me just look at this and do the opposite of that, right? So um, here might be another example. Um, One of yours might be drinking, you know, drinking beers, right? If you, if you don't want to get the beer belly or you know what got you the beer belly, now you say, okay, you know what? Maybe I have to cut down my alcohol consumption. Maybe I can't be doing all this beer drinking all the time, right? List out all of the things that are critical saboteurs for you on your road to success and then just look at that and say, okay, this means that I, I cannot do any of these things or I have to limit the volume of me doing these things on the road to success. Now, let's put this to the test. Whenever it comes to anybody who is in good physical shape, don't they always swear by a diet routine? Don't they always have meal preps? Don't they always have something that's called a cheat day? How did they arrive at knowing that they had to do all of that? By the inverted thinking, by saying, okay, if I can't eat whatever and still get to where I need to be, that means that I need to be conscious about what I'm eating. How do I do that? Maybe it's meal prepping. Maybe it's designating one day or one meal in a week to say, you know what, here's what I'll go all out and I'll have my little binge and I'll have, you know, my cookies or cupcakes or whatever. But every other time I'm going to be focused on my conscious diet. That's how they get there. Right. Same thing when it comes to drinking beers. When you look at most guys or most women that are in avid physical fitness and great shape, most of them are not heavy beer drinkers because they understand, you know what? Uh, If I'm going to have a drink at all, maybe it'll be a couple times a week or, you know, maybe in low amounts, maybe a little bit of wine, but nothing heavy. No hard drinking, you know, because they're not going to want to, uh, you know, have this great workout in the gym and then offset it with, you know, so much alcohol in their system. They're not going to do that because that's going to, you know, increase aging, is going to impact their protein synthesis, which is responsible for building muscle. They understand at a very basic level, you get to, you get to do what you have to do by knowing what not to do, right? So by you knowing what not to do, that gives you an advantage now on knowing exactly what you should do. So, you don't have to be the world's smartest person to get to success. All you need to know is you need to be able to be willing to make small steps day in and day out to get to where you need to be. And if you need help, use the inverted thinking. You want to get to the success cycle in life, not the failure cycle. In this life, you will be in one of the two. And oftentimes we find ourselves in both throughout different periods in the life. But if you want to hedge the bet and stay on the good side of things, I hope this video has given you some excellent understanding on how to strive closer deliberately towards your success. So I will see you in the next episode. This is Real Life Success.